What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. Welcome back to another episode of the all-wheel drive Honda build series. We're here to visit Mark at Mozworks. They've been hard at work machining our K24 block. They added some dart and sleeves. The last time we were at Mozworks was probably three or four years ago when we brought our RB block for them to do the machining on it. So can't wait to say what's up to them. Haven't seen them in a while. Let's go check it out. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Javier? Nice to see you, man. Me too, man. It's been it's been quite a while. Yep, yep. Last time the fans were here, it was probably I don't know four years ago, three or four years ago with uh, our RB block. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's yeah awesome RB30. to be back, man. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to see you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I guess let's uh, let's go check out the Honda block. Yeah, and yeah. Let's go see what's going on. Got some SRs here. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is a, a 2.4 liter uh, all motor build for a drag race guy. Sweet. Pretty nice setup. It's we're, we're doing a little more development on some of the trigger kits with that right now. Um, this is like a typical build we do. It's a rear-wheel drive S14 motor. You know, simple four to 600 horsepower build. Awesome. What is this? Is that the TV, TV deal? Yeah, this is the, the TV48. We, we did a couple of billet motors for a guy in the Middle East. So we, we have one for ourselves that we were gonna do more development on, but we kind of paused on it since COVID. Jeez. But this might be something we- This is a we, massive engine. What is this, like a five liter or something? Yeah, this particular one has a, a, a BC crank in it, so it's a, it's a five liter right now. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, full billet, billet block, billet head, billet <laughs> it everything. It is wild. Set of Kelford cams. I mean, just like the idea of the difference in engine size. Yeah. Jesus. It's man. definitely a monster. That's sweet, man. All right, well, let's, uh, yeah. let's go check out the infamous engine room here. Oh. Yeah, the guys are pretty, pretty busy out there. Oh, yeah. It's a little, a little quieter in here. We're here in Sanford, Florida. Uh, with the TRC crew working on their uh, K24 project. When they brought us a block, it was a typically used, you know, 10, 20 year old block out of the junkyard. So first thing we did, we would break it down, clean it, de-plug it, and then blast it. So once we do that, we can start fresh with machine work. Um, from there, we put in the CNC machine and we start machining it out for the uh, Darden MID sleeves. So that requires us pretty much removing all the open deck sleeve that was in there, all the way down to the base of the block. From there, we would send it back to the hot tank, clean it, get it ready, bring it in the engine room. We'll prep the sleeves for installation. From there, we send it to our oven. We'll heat it up for a little bit, get the block nice and warm, get it to expand a little bit. We'll drop the sleeves in, put the torque plate on, let it cool down, let it seal. We'll send it back to CNC machining. We'll pull the torque plate off, we'll deck it. We actually step deck the blocks a little bit, the Hondas. So we'll leave the sleeve about, uh, we'll leave it proud about three thou to give the block some room and to let it uh, seat the head gasket. Once we surface it, we'll bore it if needed, but these, he stayed factory bore, so we didn't really have to bore it. 
it'll go back to cleaning. We'll clean the block, then we'll come back in the engine room. We'll prep it for final honing. We'll get the torque plate back on it. Install the girdle with some brand new uh, Honda bolts, some Honda fasteners, since there's no main studs for the, the K-Series block. And we'll send it out to honing. We'll hone the cylinders up. We can rough hone it, a good 20 thou, back to the, to the factory size, finish hone it. From there, we'll transfer it to the, the line honing machine. We'll line hone the mains, make sure they're within spec. We have multiple machinists and personnel touching the block, so it's, we're not relying on one person to do the complete job. This block probably had about six pe people touch it through the process, so if anything's broken, if anything's missed um, for quality control, many people see it, so if, if, if there is something wrong with it, then it'll, it should get caught on the way. All right, guys, so now that you've seen the first step of our K24 engine build, let's get some insight from Jay on aftermarket sleeves and when you might need them for your build. Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about engine sleeves what different types there are, and why you may want them. So there are four common reasons that you would move into an aftermarket sleeve. Power level of the engine, the bore size needed for your build, a material constraint with the factory style sleeve and the aftermarket piston you're trying to use, or you've damaged the cylinder and you need to replace the sleeve. An aftermarket sleeve is a thicker build of material and the alloy loans itself to keeping shape under elevated combustion. So as you raise the power level, with an aftermarket sleeve, the cylinder will stay round, and when you raise the power level with a factory sleeve, the cylinder can distort or crack. So regardless of the manufacturer, there are two different types of sleeves. There's a wet sleeve and a dry sleeve. A wet sleeve, the factory cylinder is totally removed, and this sits in its place. So now the water of the engine is directly against the sleeve. A dry sleeve is going to fit inside the factory cylinder, so the factory cylinder stays intact, you bore it out and you press this in. It's worth noting that there are a few advantages with a Darton MID sleeve. These sleeves are installed with an O-ring at the bottom, so the sleeve can be removed if needed. If you use a situation where the sleeves are epoxied in, there's a couple things that are presented. It's hard to get the sleeve out, so if you drop a valve and you wanna service the engine, getting the sleeve out if it's epoxied in is gonna be a pretty large task. The other thing is when you bolt the head on this, it's kind of floating in those O-rings. There's nothing that's um, unnaturally loaded in the block. So you have less tendency to develop cracks. Um, this is not a new design. They've been doing this in the diesel community for a long, long time. You would just pull the sleeve out when it's reached its service life and put another sleeve in. It also locates on the other cylinders in the block, which offers some rigidity in the deck area. So overall, this is a pretty nice product. Um, it also does a good job of keeping shape uh, under stress and has a good memory. This alloy has a good memory to return to size. Uh, if you've got the engine hot or if you're overusing it, it's pretty forgiving material. While there are a lot of machine shops that can do this procedure correctly, you should understand that this is not something that's very simple and it's easy to screw up. Make sure that you're dealing with a machine shop that has done a lot of this work and they're very comfortable doing this work. If you make a mistake during the process, the engine block will end up in the garbage and you're going to be out quite a bit of money. So make sure that the machine shop that you've picked to do this is capable and comfortable sleeving your block. Get it all together. So this is where the magic happens. Yeah, yeah. This is basically our QC assembly room. Um, nice, clean, clean room, uh, climate controlled, where we do a lot of our machining prep, final assemblies, uh, you know, quality control measurements. You know, the, the temperatures, everything. Especially in Florida, where yesterday it was 40 degrees, and today and tomorrow it's going to be 80 degrees. So temperature fluctuates a lot. So to be able to take measurements in a, in a climate controlled area is, is critical when you're, you know, you're, you're dealing with tents. Oh yeah, so. for sure. Some Pro Street Build 2Js we're, we're working on right now. It's about 80% 80 80, uh, finished already. So it's, we still gotta finish the, the sleeving area. 
most of the features are done. Cool. More SRs. That's a, a bottom out turbo kit that we're working on for the SR prototype. Nice. Yeah. I guess block is pretty much reassembled, ready for quality control checks. It's got our billet girdle on it, billet main caps. So we'll, we'll break the motors down after all the machining, clean them and reassemble them to check the measurements one last time before we, we proceed. Nice. And we got Miguel here working on some pistons. I think he's working on what, a 2J short block? 2JC short block. <laughs> and I got some VQ 37 VHR long blocks that we've been building. Nice. Well, it looks like there's a lot more machines out there since last time <laughs> we came. I think you had one like back in the corner. And uh, so it's awesome to see you, you growing and, and thriving, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, the key is we, 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 we like to make our own products in house. And the only way to do that is have your own machinery and have your own, you know, be able to do it yourself. And as we make more products and more and more and more, one machine's not enough. So we got to continue our, you know, capabilities yeah. and our capacity and just buy more machines and we can make more at more one time. Continue journey, man. Yep. <laughs> Let's check them out. Yeah. Well, this is our manual area. We do a lot of engine machining. You know, you can see Michael here decking the block. Blind boring, honing. Mm -hmm. This is like our rod honing machine, crank balancing, cylinder head machines. This is what we do a lot with production CNC machining. So we got the guys here making bill and main caps. I got my best employee right there, <laughs> working nonstop. My man's got a robot arm. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. That is cool, man. So, and yeah, we're setting the machines up right now for another production run. Looks like, yeah, Billy Girdles. We just finished the batch of bow housings. We actually designed the casting. We have a casting house here in Florida to make those. And then we'll finish machine them here. Those are our SRV cube housings. Um, this is our breakdown area, hot tank area engine prep so we get the motors in this is the first place they go we'll break them down it's easy this is an sr we got broken down so it'll start looking like this and then when it's finished it'll look like the one that we saw at the beginning of the video nice and pretty there's another twin spindle lathe with live tooling and a bar feeder so th this machine runs 24 7 non-stop right now we're just making some short shifters parts for our short shifters So this part will go from bar stock to a finished part in about 20 minutes. No way, that's awesome. Is that one being done right here? Yep. See if we can see it. Got a windshield wiper on this thing? Fits out here, conveyor belt. So this is how they start. Yeah, well actually it starts off in a three foot piece. And we can make six pit parts out of a three foot stick. And then we have like about a four inch remnant that pops out when it's done, when the next nice. stick comes in. Awesome. And what are, what are these for? What, what uh, platforms? Uh, it's, it's a Z32 short shifter. We mainly make them for our, our SR VG, KA VG adapter kits. Nice. You know, we sell so many of them. You know, we like to bring all that work in-house and it can work out pretty good for us. Awesome. More five axis machinery. We do a lot of block work in here. A lot of CNC porting. Pro, pro drag billet block that the customer had and looks like he, he blew the head gasket and it ended up torching down inside the cylinder so we ended up grinding it out machining it out see right through it <laughs> not supposed to be like that <laughs> and then we'll, we insert a part in it we'll weld it up we'll machine it for uh, larger od sleeves and then get it back running and get it, another it, use out of it oh yeah yeah, yeah. It, it'll be a good uh, secondary block i wouldn't use it as a primary but you know, a lot of these race teams will have, you know, three or four blocks, so they can cycle through them. Usually the cars running these are making upwards of, you know, 2,000 horsepower. Oh, two, 3,000. Yeah. yeah, these guys, who knows what they're making. Yeah. But the good thing is we can make these and we can and, and we can support them and, and repair them in-house. All right, so for the OG, OG, OG TRC fans, <laughs> I don't know, most of you guys probably won't remember when we first did a video of this, but this car right here was the first video we ever made at a racetrack with TRC. This must have been like something like 10 or 11 years ago at Palm Beach International Raceway. So this car brings back quite the memories for sure. We'll have to see if we can find this vid and, and plug it. It might not even be on YouTube anymore. 
but this was the first car we ever filmed. So eventually we'll probably get an SR20 back in it. For sure, for sure. And I see uh, I know there's an SR20 in, in this bad boy right here. Yeah, this is the, the S15 Techno Toys. We've uh, we filmed this thing many, many times over the years and boy does she move. It's been like, what, mid to low sixes or something like that? Uh, we've been 620 at like 230 miles an hour. <laughs> That's wild. SR20. So. Hell of a ride. You guys are pumping crazy power out of this little SR, man. Yeah, we made it a little over 2,000 on the engine dyno, and that was at 80 pounds, and we, we, we'll probably make it around 2,200 at the track. Wow. It makes about 90 pounds at the track. That is nuts. It's a wild machine right here, man. of our K24 engine build. We're gonna catch up with Jay. We're gonna go over all the parts we're gonna use for our engine build. And Jay's gonna walk us through assembling the short block. We'll see you guys next time.